All right, let's bring in now Henry Byers, Byers, head of ocean intelligence at Freight Waves. Uh, Henry, thank you so much for being with us. So, you know, to the top of this, we looked at the uh, impact already on gas prices uh, because of, of these vessels now rerouting here. So how significant uh, of an impact are we talking really worldwide and the U.S., uh, considering that we're already starting to see it? Sure. Well, we think short term, um, you know, it's going to be container shipping that sees, you know, the biggest impact. Um, it's about 21% you know, of containerized product that ships around the world, you know, travels through the Suez. For refined, pro refined products, um, it's closer to about 12%. Um, and, and that's going to take some time, I think, uh, for it to play out because what you could have here is, you know, the companies feeling, um, you know, comfortable uh, moving back through the Suez. But if things ex escalate, um, which they certainly could, um, you know, you have you know, your right to assume that would have a significant impact on prices. We just think that the container ships um, and the shipping lines, certainly the product that moves, um, you know, to Europe from Asia specifically into the U.S. East Coast um, will certainly, you know, be constrained. You know, and, and this really just illustrates even though something can be happening, you know, what seems like a world away, it really does show uh, how we are all connected. Henry, has anything like this happened before? Absolutely. I mean, we've had bottlenecks. You know, if you look at the past uh, four or five years, you know, shippers are used to dealing with what we've, you know, just gotten used to saying black swan events. You know, everything from the port strikes back 2014, 2015 on the West Coast, the trade war, then you had um, COVID, and you, you know, you come back to, to normalcy or think you're going to, and, and all of a sudden the war in Ukraine breaks out. And then, um, you know, you, you did have that ever, ever given, the evergreen ship that got stuck in the Suez. Um, it's probably, you know, small news at this point, uh, but, but it, you know, it did basically stop the traffic through the Suez. So, so you know, companies are used to how to navigate, um, you know, what this, uh, you know, Suez Canal obstruction kind of looks like. But, um, you know, to the extent that it's geopolitical um, and, and that things could deteriorate, not, not you know, get better from a, a safety standpoint or, you know, feeling good going up through the Suez as a company, um, you know, we, we, we have a lot of things to fall on in terms of data. But I think, um, you know, as far as, you know, where we go from here, just in terms of uh, a war breaking out in this era, uh, in that region, you know, that's really significant. I'd say that it certainly is a black swan. Certainly, you know, and, you know, obviously, you know, there are dangers um, really associated with any industry. But, you know, seeing this this real danger, these drone attacks that, that are continuing to happen, and, and now we have the U.S. and these other nations trying to, you know, create this new force to, to protect ships there in the Red Sea. Are you hopeful this approach will even work? I, I think it will um, if, if it's done properly. Um, I think if you, you know, I follow uh, or, or, you know, correspond, you know, frequently with, with a lot of the, you know, maritime security experts, um, I think, you know, that they're just, you know, being very outspoken about the U.S.'s need to, to lead here, um, to get our allies together uh, to make something happen because it is a very, very critical shipping lane. It doesn't help, obviously, that you know the, the drought in the Panama Canal um, has been impacting shipping as well. So if things you know deteriorate um, you know, and don't get better, um, and again, I think that's why the call for a strong presence and um, you know standing up to protect uh, free trade is, is you know happening. Um, but I think that you know in conjunction with the Panama Canal drought could really you know impact U.S. transportation specifically, where the West Coast now ends up being really congested. Uh, like we saw during COVID with 100 ships off mm -hmm. the, the coast. Now, that seems extreme now, but I think no one really would have expected that in hindsight um, in 2021, late 2021. So um, it just, again, back to your point about it all being connected and all affecting one another, it certainly can get pretty ugly from here if things, um, you know, don't get ironed out quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And the ripple effects uh, can certainly be very, very real. Henry Byers, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.